Hey guys, Lee here. Today I have a tour of my pencil case for you. Obviously I do not just carry pencils around in this thing, it's kind of a catch-all and everything that you see in here is things that I use on the regular. One of the things that's really helped me to grow my art is by doing it on the go, so this thing has really been a massive help for me. So starting off with the case itself, it is obviously, as it says on the case, a home cube case. It's a little bit beat up because I've had it for a couple of years now, and I just really like it. It is um, really sturdy, and yeah, it's, it's a nice case. So let's go ahead and open this thing up, and you can see generally how I have it all laid out. And I'll go into more detail about the case itself at the end of the video. But as you can see, I've got quite a lot. All right, so the first section is this little mess mesh section, and I'm going to go through every supply that I have in here for you. First off, we have some pencil lead. This is the 0.7 pencil lead from Pintel, which I use in my uh, 0.7 pencil. Next up, I've got this 0.3, is that the 0.3? Yeah, 0.3 pencil lead by Pintel that I use in my 0.3 mechanical pencil. This is a Whiskey Painters Travel Paint Brush. This is the first travel brush I ever purchased, um, excluding water brushes. And it works really nice. It's still going strong, still holding its shape. And again, I've had it for a couple of years now. This is a ink piston converter. This is used in my fountain pens. Uh, specifically, this one goes in a brush pen by Kuratake. And I'm just showing you how it works. It sucks in the ink. And that way, instead of using um, disposable cartridges, you can just refill this one. And I've got an empty cartridge, which I should just get rid of. All right, moving on to the next section on this guy. Uh, it's a little Velcro closure. And I have two packs of ink cartridge refills. Now these I kind of just have on a uh, emergency only use basis because I do like to refill my cartridges and I, I really want to phase these out. Um, but this is the Kuratake, so these go to my Kuratake brush pens. I have two of them. Um, only one do I keep in this case because my other one is uh, too long to fit in the case. And these are for the Pintel Pocket Brush Pens, which uh, most people know these. They're the most popular brush pen. These guys I don't like as much as the Kuratake Brush Pen because they do not make a ink converter to go with it. And I really do like to try to reduce whatever waste I can with my art supplies. And... Um, because these are disposable and I can't, they don't, pr um, they don't produce a converter. Um, you pretty much either have to um, buy the refill cartridges or do something that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. But anyway, I also have a business card. This is from this picture is from my 2018 Inktober, and this is an outdated card. I don't know why I still have it in here, but it's a nice little nostalgia piece. All right, that is on um, the open flap. So now we have this middle section, which is my most used pencil pen situation. So starting off, I have my fountain pen. This is the first fountain, fountain pen that I started using um, maybe two years ago. I actually have a haul video for this pen. I was really excited about it. 
Um, and I do like it now. Um, after I used it for a little while, I realized it was a bit of a knockoff pin, and I have another video where I tell you not to buy this pin. Um, but since then, it has grown on me, and it's actually pretty reliable. I forgot the name of it, but if you check out that haul video, which I will admit is a little cringy, um, you can find out what kind of pin it is. And this one came with a plastic piston converter, so I can use my own ink in that. And I really like that about this pin. So this is my second fountain pen. The other one had a pretty bold line, and this is um, the fine line version of the Metro uh, Pilot Met Metropolitan fountain pen. So this is a pretty nice pen too. Uh, this again, this one is in the size fine, and it's got this ink converter which you squeeze to get the ink like to suction in. It's not the best one, but it works. And because I do try to not buy things that I don't need, I just keep using it. And because I have multiple fountain pens, it's okay if one runs out. Next up, we have the Pilot Pocket Brush Pen. This is my number one favorite brush pen that I own, and it is... Um, definitely recommend it over the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen, although they are both nice pens. The thing that I like about this one is, one, it comes with a piston converter, which I'll show you here. Um, so it, you don't have to keep buying refill cartridges and then wasting them. And it also comes with a um, replaceable tip. So if you do abuse this pen and you end up fraying the tip, then you can replace the tip without having to replace the whole pen. And I'll show you in a little bit um, exactly what I mean by that. Next up we have my two pencils that I keep in this case. They are the Graphic Gear 500 by Pentel. I have a 0.7 and a 0.3. The 0.3 is super, super fine, and the 0.7 is a thicker, so I might do the um, 0.3 to do extreme details or basic sketches, and the 0.7 for more shady effects. All right, now to the bulk of this pencil case. Starting off, we have this really used up paper towel. I've actually had this thing in my pencil case for over at least a year now. Um, it's kind of crazy that it's held up this long, um, but it, it may even be more than that. Um, and it's still got some blank space on it, So, but I just use this to dab my paint brushes and my um, water brushes when I'm painting. Next up we have a couple of items. The washi tape is a staple in here. You can use that for multiple things. Mainly I just use it to create a border on my pages, um, but sometimes I do use it for decoration too. And here we have some binder clips, which everybody needs to hold their sketchbook open while they are painting or drawing. Moving on, I have got my two Pentel pocket brush pens in here. And here's what I mean about um, the frayed tips. So you can see that I used these guys, I often use these to fill in large spaces when I'm on the go, and it ended up with me fraying the tip of one, so I had to buy another one. And this is before I discovered the Pilot Pocket brush pen. So I do keep these to specifically to continue to use for filling in large spaces. And I will often use the frayed one to do the bigger spaces and the non-frayed one to just kind of outline those spaces that I need to fill in. I don't wanna waste them, so I keep them. And actually, um, you'll see here, I'm just showing you that um, these have those um, disposable cartridges. I do actually put my own ink in these. I reuse them by using a um, syringe to insert the ink in, and I'm about to show that to you. So this syringe is 
It's not a medical syringe. It has a blunt tip on it. And I am able to fill this up with whatever ink I want and use it to fill my disposable cartridges instead of throwing them away. And so that helps reduce waste. Next up I have, what am I doing? Okay, here is my medium tipped Pilot Metropolitan Fountain Pen. This one is probably my least used pen. I got three fountain pens, one to be a bold line, one to be a, um, uh, one to be a bold line, one to be a medium, and one to be a fine, and that was the medium. So, and then now we have the Signo White Gel Pen, which is uh, my preferred gel pen over the Jelly Roll. A couple of odd pieces here. We have a pipette, which I use to drop water into my watercolor palette as just prep to get them wet for use. And these are my tortillons that I carry around. And this is what I use when I'm doing realistic sketching to blend large areas. I don't use these very often though. Next up, we have my kneaded erasers. I keep them in this little plexiglass um, container because I don't want them to get all dusty and gross. And I just have a more used up one and a less used up one that I keep um, in their own little lumps. The dark one is super dark because I used it to um, lift up pencil from doing ink projects. So, and I just keep them in there and it fits nicely. Next up we have my water brush. This is by Koi and this is the very first water brush I ever purchased. I want to say four or five years ago now and it's held up pretty nicely. So yeah, keep that in there. I've used lots of different water brushes and this one um, has really stood the test of time. We have my, this is a new addition to my um, travel case. It is my travel brushes by AIT Art. It works pretty good so far. Um, they're not like the super high quality ones. These ones, I think it was maybe 20 bucks for the whole set. Um, yeah, and they, they serve their purpose. I, I don't have a major problem with any of these and they come in lots of different sizes, so it was really convenient. And they do come with a cute little flippy case, which I removed them from in order to have them fit in here. And lastly, the star of the show is this Daler Rowney palette. Um, this is the first travel palette that I ever had, and I still use it um, as a rotation. This thing is not available to purchase new, I don't think. I did try to find it and I couldn't. Um, but it's got a really cool design. It's really compact and you, but it still manages to include a lot of water mixing space that you don't have to mix your colors too much. And yeah, I just really like it. Um, I, I've put my own paints in this. I don't have the original paints that I, that came in it because they are not super high quality. And then, it, yeah, if I want to, I can put my little travel brush in there, but that's not necessary for me. But yeah, I like it. It is very convenient. And I have three small travel palettes that I kind of rotate between and maybe I'll do a little um, video dedicated to just those. And this sticker is by an artist named Hajra Meeks. Um, because I was her patron, she made little character stickers of all of her patrons. And this is mine. I think it's called um, Lee Stein, I think is what she called it. Anyway, it was cute and I, and I really enjoyed it. 
And now for the case itself. It is a, seems like to be a synthetic fabric. You can see that I have um, worn it down with use, but it's still holding up strong. Um, I don't intend to, in place, to replace this thing until it starts to rip, and I may even try to patch it up in that scenario. So yeah, we've got this little mesh pocket and that stores all of my converters and um, converters and my pencil refills. We've got a little Velcro pocket, my flappy thing with the pencil, uh, pencil elastic. And this is probably the only thing about it that I don't ever use. Um, it's got this little divider in here, but my other supplies don't really work um, with that divider up. So it's, but it's just fabric. And so I just lay it down and don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, it's got a pretty deep um, pocket and it holds quite a lot of supplies. And here's just how I load it all up does not take a lot of time and there we have it i hope you guys really enjoyed this video if you have any questions about the products in it please leave a comment in the comment section down below if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. I hope you have a wonderful day and yeah, bye.